This story begins by a covenant ship called the Minor Transgression during the 23rd Age of Doubt around 2524. This spacecraft was an exploratory vessel tasked with traveling to the very edges of covenant-controlled space in search of holy relics or forerunner artifacts. The ship's crew consisted mostly of Kigyar, or jackals, save for a few others. One such example was Dadab, an ungoy or grunt who held the rank of deacon. This designation was a religious title, a low-level ranking within the covenant's holy circles. Though it may have been a relatively unimportant designation, it was the highest an ungoy like Dadab could ever hope to achieve. He was a member of a race that the other covenant species looked down on and were therefore deemed unworthy of anything more prestigious within the covenant's sprawling ministries. It still wasn't exactly easy for a grunt to become a deacon though, and Dadab was only awarded the title because he was intelligent and had an intimate understanding of many of the covenant's religious tenets. Of all the other species in their galaxy-spanning pact, none seemed to despise his race more than that of the Kigyar, and unfortunately for Dadab, the minor transgression was captained by one of their number. In this particular moment in time, Dadab found himself walking through what appeared to be some kind of storage area aboard a ship built by a very newly discovered alien race. This particular ship was filled with some kind of melon that the jackals seemed to be enjoying. At the base of a storage crate filled with the fruits was a group of the bird-like beings squawking to each other. As Dadab walked by, one of them hucked a piece of the fruit at him. It made its way home, impacting on the side of his head, but he paid them no mind, ignoring their childish immaturity. Dadab was assigned to this specific vessel to ensure that its occupants, the Kigyar, followed the necessary protocols involved in recovering any ancient objects they might discover. You see, most of the jackals didn't really subscribe to the Great Journey, the Covenant's religion, but Dadab firmly believed in these teachings. The Kigyar had joined the pact strictly under the promises of treasure and piracy. They were essentially hired mercenaries. This meant that someone with intimate knowledge of the writs established in the supergroup's religion needed to be present to ensure the Kigyar didn't commit any blasphemous acts. That was where he came in. It was his job to monitor the pernicious pirates and make sure they followed the rules involved in recovering the objects left behind by their thought to be gods. The strife between their races made things difficult though, and oftentimes they would resist his commands simply because of his species. To put it simply, his job sucked and he hoped that by performing well, he may receive a promotion in the form of an assignment anywhere but here. Dadab had great aspirations and longed to one day become a preacher for other members of his species to look up to in times of suffering. In order to achieve that lofty goal, he'd first have to get the hell off of this assignment. His current objective, which had been given to him by the captain of the minor transgression, a jackal ship mistress named Chur or Yar, was to obtain a small piece of salvage from an alien ship. The treasure that he sought was a small cube that had somehow attempted to communicate with the Covenant vehicle. The Ministry of Conversion, the group within the Covenant that was responsible for conscripting the different species they encountered into their number, would need to see the object. After all, whoever the ship belonged to would likely need to be folded into their multi-species union. The jackals that had traveled onto the ship with the grunt had already started pilfering some of the ship's contents, namely the fruit they had chucked at him earlier. Gorging on the food meant only one thing could follow, and disgustingly, they decided to literally take a shit on top of the device Dadab had been sent to obtain, forcing the deacon to physically search through their vile excrement until he found it. At once, he suddenly realized exactly why he'd been sent on this particular assignment. Chur or Yar surely knew what acquiring the device would entail and likely sent him to deal with it as a result. Object in hand, he returned to the minor transgression and once inside, headed towards a section of the ship that had an atmosphere his physiology could actually handle, one composed primarily of methane. He entered to refill his tank's atmosphere supply and take off the uncomfortable mask he needed to wear in order to breathe. As he plugged his pack into a nearby rack for refilling, he was approached by one of the strangest species the Covenant had folded into their number, a Hurragok, otherwise known as an engineer. These buoyant squid-like creatures couldn't exactly speak verbally, so they communicated through a form of sign language. Dadab had learned how to communicate with the creatures, but had trouble mastering the language due to his thick and stubby fingers. These biological computers were beyond bizarre and possessed both an innate ability to interact with technology and an obvious apparent love for doing it. So naturally, when Dadab returned with a new and unknown piece of equipment, the engineer was more than eager to analyze it. Dadab handed the object over to the creature and it immediately began examining it. As it fluttered its tentacles about, the ungoy sat down and observed the engineer, who he had learned was named Lighter Than Sum. Whenever a Hurragok was born, or created, the first noticeable and distinguishable traits relating to their floating patterns would become their title. Their parents built them, and part of that process was filling various sacks on their body with just the right amounts of gases to allow them to float. So in this instance, this engineer was lighter than others of its ilk, lighter than some. After some back and forth between the two of them, they decided to bring the object and the information that Lighter Than Some had gleaned from it to the jackal ship mistress in charge of the minor transgression. When they arrived, the two of them informed her that the object contained coordinates which led to a location just outside of Covenant-controlled space, seemingly the ship's origin point. 
The exact destination was unclear, but together they all agreed that they should investigate further before bringing this discovery to their leaders, the prophets, or San Shayun. Dadab hoped that whatever these coordinates led to would fast track his theoretical promotion off of this ship. Chur Yar ordered her jackal subordinates to re-enter the spacecraft, and once they were on board, they set off to this new destination. Eventually their ship arrived, and Chur Yar decided to keep the spacecraft afloat just outside the unexplored system. They waited for a while here, and during this period of waiting, the Ungoy had grown bored, and with nothing to do, had taken to creating a game for himself that was similar to one that he used to play during his youth. It was called Hunting Rock, and the goal was simple fling the rock at a species of grub-like pests that had invaded the ship. Hitting one and killing it meant the thrower had earned a point. Whoever finished the game with the most points was the winner. Dadab tried to get lighter than some to participate in his game, but the engineer refused, calling it murder. He decided to alter the rules of the game for his friend by placing an empty energy core in a precarious position. He handed a rock to the Huragak and gestured for him to throw it at the core. The creature clearly had no desire to participate in this game, but perhaps only to appease his ungoy compatriot, he took the rock and threw it at the core, nailing it perfectly and knocking it off of the surface Dadab had placed it on. Dadab congratulated his friend on scoring a point, but before they could continue their simplistic game, Chur Ur Yar summoned him to the bridge, commanding him to leave lighter than some behind for the time being. Once he arrived on the bridge, a staggering scene sat before him. Using a luminary, a device that the Covenant had created from the Forerunner Keyship in the center of High Charity, they had detected tons of artifacts on the surface of the alien world. The device had also detected something above the planet as well, something the Jackal quickly determined was likely an artifact within another alien ship. This would be their first prize. Dadab urged her to inform the Prophets, but Chur Ur Yar had other plans. With this many relics, no one would know if she took some for herself, and that was exactly what she planned to do before informing their higher-ups. Dadab didn't like it, but he was outnumbered, and fighting would be a death sentence, so he agreed to follow her orders for the time being, whatever they might be. Dadab's mind reeled as he contemplated the consequences of her actions. He was surely going to die now. If not by her hands once he'd exceeded his usefulness, then at the hands of whoever the prophets sent to punish them for their misdeeds. Once the minor transgression had attached itself to the alien vessel, the jackals, the ungoy, and the huragak all boarded cautiously. Instead of containing fruit, this particular ship contained a large device with strange characters engraved into its surface that he didn't recognize. It was possible that these were forerunner symbols he'd never seen, but either way, he wasn't sure. He crept onwards and ahead of the Kigyar and made his way to an odd lift. After fiddling with his interface, it carried him upwards. He stepped through a door in front of him and suddenly, something struck his tank. Before he could discern the source of the attack, he was struck again in the stomach. In fear, he curled into a ball and pleaded for mercy, but instead of receiving a reply, he was struck again and again. He finally got a look at the creature that was attacking him. It was tall and muscular, but pale. It was wearing a cloth jumpsuit and seemed to be baring its teeth at the ungoy. Its body was mostly hairless, save for a tuft atop its head. Whatever the creature was, it was pissed, yelling unintelligible sounds as it attacked the defenseless ungoy. It prepared to hit the grunt yet again for what would surely be a killing blow, when suddenly, the strange alien fell to the ground in front of him in a heap. Its head had been caved in by a rock, and it now laid there, dead. Dadab looked up to see his friend, lighter than some, trembling and attempting to speak to him. He managed to discern a single word. One. The dab moved to the dead creature and understood exactly what the Huragak meant. Lighter than some's hunting rock was buried deep inside the creature's brain. The engineer had killed the alien to save him. After Dadab's close call, Chur Yar ordered him to stay in the methane-enriched area of the ship. Since the attack, he had become an emotional wreck and needed some time to try and relax. As annoying as it may have been, she still needed him alive to better communicate with the engineer. Though the jackals were unable to locate the artifact on the alien ship, they quickly moved to another in hopes of having better luck there. She and her cohorts entered another craft, leaving the Ungoy and the Huragak behind. Once she exited, Dadab, with the help of Lighter Than Some, quickly worked to send communications to the Greater Covenant fleet about their discovery. Chur Yar could commit as much heresy as she wanted, but he wasn't about to sit by and just let it happen. When the ship mistress returned to the minor transgression after a firefight with the newly discovered aliens, she quickly discovered what the Deacon had done. Dadab had no intention of sticking around, though. He quickly fled to one of the minor transgressions' escape pods and waited for his squid-like compatriot to join him. An explosion reverberated throughout the ship's hull as a battle within the ship raged on, not too far beyond his current location. Unbeknownst to the Ungoy, Chur Ur Yar had engaged in combat with a few of the aliens that had attacked Dadab and received a near-fatal blow in the process. In a last-ditch effort to kill her attacker, she had fired a round of plasma into the methane-enriched section of the ship, causing large explosions to ripple throughout the vehicle and killing herself in the process. Dadab didn't know any of this, though, and he likely wouldn't care if he did. He was about to escape and was simply awaiting lighter than Sum's arrival. Once his friend finally got to the pod, Dadab activated it and they blasted away from the Covenant ship. While the engineer was away from the Ungoy, he had grabbed all of the cubes they had salvaged from the alien ships and had discerned a way to make them communicate. 
What this meant, the dad was unsure, but regardless, he was terrified of the potential punishment they'd receive for having tampered with the communicative circuits. The deacon had been taught that artificial intelligences were dangerous and sinful. The Covenant had become aware that the Forerunners were betrayed by artificial minds of their own making when faced against the Flood, and so the creation of such things was considered blasphemy and punishable by death. The two had more immediate problems to worry about, though. As the escape pod floated aimlessly in space, they quickly discovered that its life support systems had no methane configurations. This meant that once Dadab had run out of breathable atmosphere, lighter than some would be forced to create more for the Ungoy. He did this by literally overstuffing himself, eating copious amounts in order to force his body to break down said nutrients. As a side effect of the process, he would expel methane, essentially farting to keep his friend alive. It wasn't exactly a pleasant experience for the engineer, however. In fact, it created a lot of physical exertion and pain. The dab watched as the Hurgot continued to abuse its body in an attempt to keep him alive. As he observed, he couldn't help but feel an intense guilt and shame for being the source of his friend's distress. The engineer had essentially force-fed himself to the point that he had no choice but to experience the world's most unimaginably painful gut trauma. So painful, in fact, that it had become completely debilitating, and if it weren't for the lack of artificial gravity in their escape pod, lighter than some's body would have collapsed in on itself from stress. Just as all hope appeared to be lost and the last of Dadab's methane supply was dwindling, a communication hailed them. A ship called the Rapid Conversion had found their escape craft and was querying their pod to see if anyone was alive inside. Without hesitation, Dadab spoke to the unknown captain and expressed the urgency of their situation. As their rescuers prepared to bring them on board, Dadab panicked. He had atmosphere to breathe now, but if they opened the pod, decompression would surely kill lighter than some in his extremely weakened state. Before they could open the pod, Dadab tried to seal it off, but when he did this, he accidentally engaged the ship's thrusters. The pod accelerated forward, smashing into a parked spirit dropship and crushing a bunch of Yan Mei, or drones, aboard the rescuer's ship. Once the Hurragak had regained some of its strength, Dadab opened their pod and the ship's crew was revealed to him. Jiral Hanai. Brutes. The brute that greeted him was unfamiliar to the Angoy, but to us, we know him as Tartarus. Despite the destruction Dadab had caused, the crew of the Rapid Conversion was far too happy to learn of the Hurragak's presence to be angry about what was destroyed. They did not possess an engineer on board their ship, and having one would be extremely useful. With the creature's aid, they would be able to repair key systems with ease. Though the drones had been used in that capacity thus far, the Hurragak was far more efficient. And because of this, they were all relegated to more simplistic sanitation positions. Once Dadab had rested from his harrowing ordeal, he decided to hold a sermon for the other Ungoy aboard the ship. Many attended, and as he spoke to them, he quickly learned how unintelligent the crew was. These were not exactly the cream of the crop of his species, and though he hated to admit it, they were hopelessly ignorant. Once his sermon ended, he and Tartarus headed towards the Rapid Conversion's hangar bays to meet up with the engineer. During Dadab's preaching, lighter than some had been busy performing maintenance wherever necessary. As they worked their way towards him, Dadab noticed that the Yan Mei aboard the ship seemed to have lost focus. This was unusual for the creatures, and he was concerned that this erratic behavior was due to the fact that their maintenance duties had been usurped by lighter than some, or that many of their hive mates had been killed when he and the engineer arrived. He was worried that they may hold some resentment towards his friend, and as a result, potentially injure him. Dadab was the only one who could communicate with lighter than some, so Tartarus brought him to the destroyed spirit dropship the engineer had been working on to ask about his progress. Once they arrived, the grunt followed his now scarred friend to the area he'd been working and laid his eyes upon a strange machine. The young boy was confused about the device and looked to his compatriot for clarification. The engineer reminded Dadab of the alien he had killed to save him, expressing remorse and deep regrets for having killed the creature. In an attempt to make amends, lighter than some had constructed one of the machines they had seen on the alien ship, a mechanism he determined was a plow for tilling soil. Lighter than some had hoped to offer the newly crafted machine to the aliens as a sort of peace offering a meager attempt to atone for the life he had taken. Seeing the machine only served to terrify Dadab, though. If the brutes aboard the Rapid Conversion learned that Lighter Than Some had been building something for the aliens instead of fixing the spirit dropship they had broke, they would be very angry. He implored the engineer to disassemble the machine as he exited the hangar. He had been summoned by the ship's captain, a brute named Maccabius, and he didn't want to keep the angry ape waiting. Upon the grunt's arrival, Maccabius beckoned him forward. They had brought their ship to the alien world, and using the Rapid Conversion's luminary had detected the many artifacts on the surface of the planet. In the sky above it was an alien ship, and etched into its surface, a series of illustrations depicting a peaceful exchange between the aliens and the Kigyar. They didn't want to fight, they wanted to make peace. Given the quantity of artifacts, and according to their luminary, the presence of an oracle, Maccabeus and his deeply religious crew howled in triumphant victory. The treasure trove and apparent peace offering before them was great news, and during that moment, translating the symbols the luminary had found for the brutes, Dadab suddenly felt like he had found what he initially sought. 
he had found his flock. Needless to say, this parlay didn't exactly end well. Dadab remained aboard the ship while the Jarlhane warriors made their way to the planet's surface, and not long after, quickly came back to the cruiser. A fight had broke out, and the peace negotiations had been a failure. Not long after their return, Macabius ordered Dadab and the other Ungoy to enter an orbital installation of the alien's making. Once inside, the grunts were divided up into groups and spread out to the station. Dadab attempted to make conversation with each group as he made his daily rounds to check on them, but many of them were unresponsive. Their spirits had dwindled significantly since the attempted peace meeting, but that didn't stop Dadab from trying to speak with them anyways. Regardless, Dadab continued to explore the facility until he discovered a housing that contained tons of the intelligent circuits that lighter than some had fused together from the other alien vessels. Vessels. This find needed to be reported to Maccabeus immediately, and so he quickly called for a transport to carry him to the rapid conversion. Once they were close to the ship, the brute sent to retrieve Dadab explained that they could not yet enter the hangar bay because for some reason there was fighting going on inside. The idea that lighter than some was there, defenseless within the hangars, frightened the Ungoy deeply, but he had no other choice than to simply sit and wait. As it turns out, his fears weren't unfounded. The Yanmei had mobbed lighter than some, viciously attacking the creature, and if it weren't for Tartarus, they easily would have killed him. The brute eliminated many of the drones that had attempted to take lighter than some's life, and after they fell, Dadab was free to enter the hangar. Once inside, he approached his friend, who was relatively uninjured. Macabeus wanted a status report. He wanted to know what the engineer had been up to this whole time. Lighter than some had built several new vehicles for the aliens. Fortunately for Dadab and the engineer, the brutes assumed this meant for killing the aliens, and not as a gift. The large vehicles, if armed with weapons, would make for excellent destructive steeds that the brutes could ride to battle. As it turns out, these were choppers. Dadab then quickly suggested that Lighter Than Some accompany him when he returned to his previous post. He didn't want his friend to get killed by the drones while he was away. The brute leader agreed, and together the two of them entered a spirit dropship bound for the alien's orbital facility. The grunt was eager to exit the ship before Lighter Than Some realized that his machines would soon be outfitted with weapons per Dadab's suggestion. He didn't want to betray his friend's trust, but unbeknownst to him, Lighter Than Some was performing his own sort of treachery. The Haragak had been conversing with an alien entity, specifically an artificial intelligence. He had hoped that their shared communications could lead to peace for everyone. Without warning, the Dab's communications device winked on, and Macabeus's voice boomed through the speaker. The brute had since been ordered to glass the entirety of the alien planet, eliminating all life on its surface, but the aliens had fought back and somehow disabled the rapid conversion. What Macabeus didn't know was that Lighter Than Some wasn't about to let him or his brutes butcher the entire planet's population without a fight. The heroic engineer planned to aid the aliens in their effort to evacuate the planet. Dadab raised a plasma pistol at some nearby machinery within the orbital station that Lighter Than Some had been fiddling with and prepared to fire at it. Perhaps he thought that if it was disabled, he'd have a chance at surviving the incoming anger from the brutes that Lighter Than Some seemed so intent on betraying. Before he could pull the trigger, the engineer simply drifted into Dadab's line of sight. The Ungoy urged his friend to move, but Lighter Than Some refused. With a shaky hand, the Ungoy threatened to shoot his friend, but in the end, he couldn't bring himself to do it. The engineer looked to Dadab and asked him a question a question he found deeply confusing. If all were worthy to walk the path of the great journey, then why should these aliens be denied this opportunity? Why were they being told to eliminate them? Macabeus spoke through the commune again, informing Dadab that the creatures they had encountered were making their way up to the orbital station as they spoke. He explained that the aliens couldn't be allowed to escape, but lighter than some's words had planted a seed of doubt in his mind. Why did these aliens deserve to die? When Dadab didn't respond to Macabeus, the Jarl Hanai spoke once more through the comms device, asking the Ungoy if he understood his orders. Dadab responded, simply saying, No, Chieftain, I do not. Then shut off the device. Lighter than some quickly began working to aid the aliens in an evacuation effort. He wasn't going to be responsible for all of their deaths. He still felt the need to atone for murdering one of their number. Meanwhile, Dadab made his way out of the room and began commanding the local Ungoy to begin forming a defensive perimeter for the aliens' inevitable arrival. Despite his best efforts, the aliens fought their way in with unprecedented ferocity. They were clearly angry, and rightfully so. As Dadab and the other Ungoy fought against them, containers filled with alien evacuees rushed by them. Lighter than some had been successful, it seemed, but regardless of that, he would likely soon meet his end. Another Ungoy nearby was suddenly hit by incoming fire and mortally wounded. Dadab approached the fallen comrade and attempted to give him comfort in his dying moments. At the same time, his own methane supply had dropped precipitously, and as a result, an inky blackness had started to creep into his vision. Before he knew it, he had fallen unconscious, and when he awoke, he saw the face of Tartarus, who had hooked him up to a fresh supply of methane. The first thought that entered his mind was to ask about his friend. Tartarus indicated where lighter than some was, then strode into battle, attacking the aliens aboard the orbital station. Dadab quickly made his way towards his friend's location, and 
As they arrived, a trio of Yanmei assaulted the defenseless creature, ripping the poor engineer to shreds. Dadab screamed in rage and anguish as his friend was killed and angrily fired his plasma pistol into the insectoids. Each of his shots hit their mark, burning the creatures to a crisp, but unfortunately he was too late. Lighter than sun was gone. With the drones dead, Dadab steeled himself for what he was about to do. One accessory to lighter than some's murder still lived, Tartarus. With his death, maybe his friend's goals of peace could finally be achieved. Only one charge remained in his plasma pistol though, so he'd have to make it count. Burdened with a new glorious purpose, Dadab strode forth, overcharging his plasma pistol and preparing to fire it at the Jirohanai warrior. As he approached, he took notice of a dark-skinned alien on the ground in front of him. The alien had just barely dodged a strike from Tartarus' gravity hammer, and before long, it would surely be crushed beneath the weapon's might. Dadab didn't care about the alien's presence, though. He aimed his plasma pistol at Tartarus and released the trigger, launching a ball of overcharged plasma straight into the brute's chest. The bolt didn't kill the warrior, but it did damage his energy shielding, leaving him vulnerable to the alien's ballistic weaponry. Without a second thought, Tartarus rushed to Dab, bringing his gravity hammer down onto the Ungoy. The blow was devastating, and the courageous grunt was likely killed instantly. Though Dadab may have failed at killing Tartarus and saving lighter than some, their sacrifices would be integral for the aliens the rest of their covenant fought so desperately to defeat humanity. That seemingly unimportant person that Dadab saw right before his death wasn't just a random soldier. That was Avery Johnson. And thanks to the fact that Dadab had shot Tartarus and damaged his energy shielding, the brute was forced to retreat, thus saving the human's life. Thanks to Lighter Than Some's final selfless act, tons of the planet's inhabitants were able to evacuate. And thanks to Dadab, Johnson would survive to aid the Master Chief during their final battle with the Covenant. Oh, and by the way, those artifacts that the luminaries kept detecting were actually not artifacts at all. They were human beings. Alright, thanks for watching. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go play some Halo.